Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of UI Fibers Live. Today, we have two exciting topics many of you have been waiting for, I believe, and this is UI5 generators and TypeScript support. <clears throat> for the first topic, we got external support for our round, and this is Marius Obert, uh, the inventor of the Easy UI5 generator. So hi, Marius. Hello. Yeah, uh, Marius will not only introduce us to the Easy UI5 generator, but also share his plans to evolve his generator so it becomes even more useful. And then we are happy to welcome Hertjan Klaps to us. He recently open sourced a new generator for UI5 libraries. Thanks for accepting our invitation and great to meet you in person, Hertjan. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Herd Jan will tell us about his generator and also explain how it harmonizes with Easy UI5. So, hope this makes you already curious. Yeah, as always, all is accompanied by my great co host and colleagues, which is Peter. Hey, everybody. And Andreas, who will also address the TypeScript support later. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Stefan sends his apologies as he had to attend another important meeting today, but he knows that you are in good hands and wishes you a lot of fun with us. You might have noticed we published a new UI5 version two weeks ago, and this is 188. Uh, yeah, we were very delighted that we got so much positive response on it and the drop of the Internet Explorer support. Um, yeah, with this version, we only started with the relevant cleaning work, more to come. That's true. So starting with 188, we really can finally drop the i11 support. Yay! I think this is really a great thing forward and uh, to bring also UI5 in general forward to make it possible to use modern JavaScript for your development. And this is what we at the end uh, are aiming for uh, and where also the TypeScript thing is coming later on in the game as well. Um, with the i11 drop uh, in UI5, we start to remove polyfills. With the removal of the polyfills, we can reduce the bootstrap size. Overall, this improves the performance. And now with the latest version 189.0 snapshot, we really completely also drop these files from the delivery. So before in 188.0, they were still in as an intermediate thing. And you could still refer to that, so something like the ES6 shims and stuff like that you needed for the i11. But even with 189.0 snapshot or 189.0 as a release, uh, to be precise, we now also removed um, these polyfills from our delivery and the, because they are not useful anymore. And we are doing more on that, uh, finding places, removing CSS, which was IE11 specific, or code places, which are IE11 specific, and clean them up now to make our code base really free from that. And more and more, also on the long run, open up, as I said, to allow to develop really with modern JavaScript here. Good. And with that, um, I think we have uh, enough about the i11. I think this should be enough in the future. So don't talk about i11 anymore. And now let's go to another important part, easy UI5 generator or UI5 scaffolding or however we call that. We had quite a journey started in, in January this year. Uh, Volker Butzek, uh, Marco Bayer, Matthias Oswald and I sat together there in a in a war or hackathon more or less, um, doing some development of new generators of new templates for UI5. And this brought us somehow then to Marius and uh, we, we somehow sketched a new idea how easy UI5 could be even better used for all the things what we are doing in the UI5 community. And with that Marius, take over, it's your time to show what you have on the agenda here and explain a bit what we have in mind. Sure, thank you, Peter. Um... Uh, let's maybe start a little bit at, with the history of ECUR5, just to get everyone on board. You, you might have used the tool in the past, so it's basically a scaffolding tool that I, the project, uh, I think I started two and a half years ago, just to give developers an easy way to bootstrap new uh, OpenUR5 and SAPUR5 projects. And initially, I um, basically tried to find an alternative way next to the uh, SAP web ID for, for local development, because in the web ID, it was always easy, I would say, because you could uh, 
open the web ID, click uh, start a new project, select a SAP UI5 project, go through the wizard steps, and bam, there was your SAP UI5 application. For local development, it was not that easy. And that's basically where um, Easy UI5 started. But I want to go a little bit deeper. That's why I didn't only uh, focus on like this initial bootstrapping, but also some scaffolding, for example, when you already have an SAP UI5 project that you could add a new view or a new controller or stuff like that to the project. And that's basically all there was two, two and a half years ago. And then because I also made it available on uh, GitHub, so it was open source, it didn't take too long until I received some pull requests. The first ones were from internal SAP. So Peter was from your team that someone uh, like uh, said, okay, that's the application works and looks good, but it's not exactly following the current best practices. So this was the first pull request that I received. And it didn't take too long until someone else, even outside from SAP, made a, a, a very good contribution. I think it was um, to allow new component usages also as a like scaffolding mechanism, which totally made, made sense. And then the project, this is how it evolved oh, more and more. And then eventually I even got pull requests that went a little bit beyond what I imagined in the first place. So there were pull requests, for example, to um, add new test cases. That kind of makes sense because there was already a, a test in the project that scaffolded for you. But then, for example, Folger, I see you in the call, hi. You made a pull request, for example, for um, your w, uh, VDI5 test generator. So it's a basically a new testing tool that you developed and you said it makes sense to combine it with easy UI5. So that was part of it. And then more and more contributions came and eventually uh, Gert uh, also made a, I think you opened an issue first and asked if you should contribute to easy UI5 to create new libraries or so not uh, web application projects, but libraries. And that's when uh, I thought, oh, obviously that makes sense. But now we went a long way from where we started with EC UI5, where it was just like create a new project for a web application. And now it could be a test only project. It could have been a library only project. And I think that was also the point where we, um, Peter also approached me with a different focus, but it really, it was the same core problem or core idea that we said, okay, how, how much content should be in EC UF5? Because obviously as more content gets in there, it's also a little bit harder to maintain it eventually because then maybe something is uh, breaks with libraries and I'm not sure how to, um, how to fix this generator. And then I always have to reassign the issue and I'm just the middleman and I'm basically the bottleneck for the EC UF5 project then. And so the idea was now to split the code base to maybe go back to the origin of ECUI5 a, a little bit, but to put that origin in a new project and to turn ECUI5 in this like roof generator. Basically, we are uh, we are splitting the yeah, the templates from the logic of fetching templates and using them, and with that. It's not only easier for me to maintain it, but it's also easier for everyone in the community to write their own yeah, skeleton generators, if you want, or also yeah, scaffolding tools. And in the next few minutes, I, will be, I want to show you um, what we did and how you can do the same thing. So um, I briefly mentioned it now, we have two projects. So ECUFI will remain at the GitHub account of SAP. And then there is a new project. And this project lives in a new GitHub organization that you might already know. It's the UI5 community organization that Peter did a while ago. He also uh, wrote a blog post about it. And this, um, this GitHub organization is the home of many things. And among others, it's the home of these plugin generators, how I call them. And I moved some of the logic of what we previously knew as uh, EC UI5 in this new project called uh, UI5, uh, Generator UI5 project that lives in UI5 community. And the logic that pulls the generator, that pulls the plugin from the uh, UI5 community that remains in uh, EC UI5 in the SAP organization. And the idea of uh, splitting it is 
also makes it easy for us to basically decouple things. So because now every time when you run ECUI5, it automatically checks, do I have the, uh, this plugin here on my local machine? And if it's not there, it will pull it. And it will also check, um, do I have a version here that is maybe outdated? And if it's outdated, it pulls the latest version. So because previously when you uh, used ECUI5, you always had to use the latest version to use the latest templates. And now this is a little bit decoupled. Obviously it would still be great if you would do a, an update if, uh, of ECUI5 as soon as it's available, but now you won't accidentally uh, create a project that follows old best practices. So what I wanna show you here, there are two terminals here. Uh, you see uh, an empty uh, folder that is called UI5 as live. And now I can call ECUI5 as we did up until today. So I call yo ECUI5. And what is new is now in the first step, it will ask me which plugin I wanna use. And currently there are three plugins available. I want to create a new project. So I select this one. And now it will ask me, what do I want to do with this? Uh, what sub generator do I want to call from this plugin? And there are multiple ones as there were multiple sub generators for ECUI 5 so far. There is one to create a new project, but there are also sub generators, for example, to add a model to an existing project but for now let's say um, create new project and from here on it's basically the same that you already know so you give your project a name you say live a namespace would be like this for example and then you can choose the type of project for example you want to have just a standalone uh, UI5 application with no plans to deploy to SAP BTP for example where should the files be served? Let's choose the CDN and the open UI5 uh, uh, resources. And then from here on, it's the same as it was before, before we did this change. And uh, now if we create a project, and let me, no, let's wait for, it's almost done anyway. And as you know, or as you might not know, this project, has everything that you need to get started. So I can call npm start. It will start a local web server that serves the files that are there. And it even has, has live reload integrated. So when I make a ch change to the source code, it will automatically refresh in the browser. So it already comes with all these best practices that you had to set up manually before. Okay, it finished. Let's switch in here. Let's call npm start. And here you see it. this is the UI5 application and it really just took me a few seconds to create it. Let's go back here. So the next thing that I want to show you is you don't have to, you can basically skip the first two steps if you already know what you want to do. For example, I want to create a second project and I know that I want to create a project and that I don't want to create a library, for example. So I can just go here and say easy UI5 project. And then I will basically skip the first step. So now it directly asks me if I want to create a new project, if I want to add a view to an existing project. And as I'm lazy, uh, you could even skip that step because you see this like term in this brackets here. That is, for example, app is for uh, creating a new project. So if I call yo ECUI 5 project app, I also skip that step. And the first thing it asks me is the name of the project that I want to create. And that's one, uh, like the cool thing that I want to show you because now it's just using my, uh, my plugin, but the plugin, the code is totally separate. And this is the source code of um, ECUF5. So if I go here and say, show me what's in the plugins folder, you see that there is uh, this generator UI5 project. And in this, uh, let's say I want to remove this folder just because let's assume I, uh, it wouldn't be available already. And then I can basically just repeat the same steps over here and it will automatically download the plugin for me. So I don't have to know that it's a plugin or I don't have to download it beforehand. 
I can just call it and it would omit automatically be downloaded and applied in one step. Okay, let's do this here. And then it says downloading and extracting, preparing. And it's, it's a little bit because I zoomed in the terminal. That's why I got this message like eight times or 10 times now. So that shouldn't happen if you don't zoom in the terminal. <laughs> And obviously it will take some time now if it's preparing because it does not only download it from GitHub, but it also calls yarn install or npm install, depending on which node environment you have immediately. So you that you're ready to start the generator mm -hmm. right when you call it. And now I'm at the same that, step where I was that, before. That's also the point that's, um, that really this, this uh, skeleton generator, what ECUI 5 now technically is, it's, it's more the orchestrator who downloads the sub, uh, your plugin generators at the end, and the plugin generators are at, at their own also developed as individual Yeoman generators. So we need to run yarn install here at the end to supply it with the uh, dependencies properly. Uh, there's also a question already. Uh, is it possible to okay. use plugins from a private enterprise NPM registry? At the moment, we have uh, somehow limited this to the UI5 uh, community uh, organization. Um, and in theory, if you would pass then uh, your auth token, uh, where you have access to the private repository of the UI5 community, it would also list the generators, uh, the private generators here. Um, technically, it could also be extended to, um, yeah, to also more or less refer to generators from other uh, origins, from other GitHub organizations. But uh, at the moment, we would like to limit it to the UI5 community. Okay, but it pulls from a GitHub repository. The question was NPM, so it's not coming no. from NPM. But from it's not coming from NPM. So that was really a different thing. Um, that we decided to use it really from GitHub because then you don't need to release uh, the generator directly to NPM. Um, it could be just uh, directly working on uh, on a repository on, on GitHub and um, then uh, the master is at the moment pulled more or less or the, the main branch, let's say, depending on how it's configured right now. And uh, this is something also worth to discuss. Uh, we can also here jointly discuss how we evolved that. Um, we had also the idea of maybe limiting it to released versions in the future. Um, that's something we are not yet 100% uh, through. But Myers, I think you can also add uh, some, some thoughts on that. Sure, I mean, this is, uh, as, as you said, Peter, it's just the way we came up with right now. I think that it's fine. but. If the community says okay they want to have more flexibility or they want they would like to host them on their own in their own github organization um, that's something we can discuss i guess interesting would also be if we say we would also allow uh, to have uh, sub generators from npm we did not continue mm -hmm. on that it's it's worth to discuss that and uh, yeah, yeah. join us in a discussion that's um, i think really also then the power and the advantage of a ui5 community of we are working together to really discuss these pieces together um, I'm almost done. Anyway, I just want to show you, like, um, basically, this is the code uh, of ECUI 5. It's still the development branch that I release uh, later today. So it will be on the domain branch as well, then as well. And you see that ECUI 5 now is uh, basically it's just this one file with about 400 lines of code. That's everything that happens. And uh, the part, the plugin that's generating the files for you is uh, here what you see in this UI5 community uh, generator UI5 project. And this is, let me go up. It's basically also a human generator that you could run standalone, but you don't have to run it standalone because there is this plugin mechanism that I described earlier. But at its core, it's just a plain human generator that has some additional properties. For example, when you saw that there was this string, um, create new open UI5 SAP UI5 project. So basically that's a display name that each generator can expose. And for example, if you have a sub generator in your project that you wanna hide because you only wanna use it for internal usage, uh, you, can, you can set this flag hidden to true and then it won't appear in ECUI 5. But besides these uh, two properties, it's basically just a regular uh, human generator that you could build host in this uh, UI5 community organization. And then it's already available in ECUI5. And that's why uh, 
that's a good segue for Gerd Jan uh, because he already built one, of, uh, built such a plugin. Well, uh, exactly as uh, Marius told me, uh, told us, uh, I created the library generator completely coincidental when the UI Fiverr's live edition, I think of two months back, uh, had the topic of generating libraries. Um, the main reason why I created the, the library generator is basically because I was working at several customers um, where I was basically integrating external JavaScript libraries, which I wanted to wrap in, inside custom controls, which I wanted to reuse in several um, Fiori applications afterwards. And since the release of UI5 tooling, I was basically developing everything using Visual Studio Code instead of, for example, Web, Web, ED, Web, Web IDE, sorry. Um, so then I noticed there's no way to easily generate a library project using the UI5 tooling or the tools available uh, on the internet, uh, which got me thinking, why shouldn't I take the web ID example, wrap it inside a quick generator that I could use to speed up development? That's basically the main reason why I started it. Um, and I had some minor experience with generators uh, when I added the NetWeaver functionality in, uh, into Easy UI 5 myself. Um, so um, after the UI 5 is live, of I think March, uh, Peter contacted me because yeah, basically I was using an old template, not following the latest best practices. Uh, so after some contributions from both Peter and Marco, uh, the plugin is now uh, fully uh, using the latest recommendations. Um, and of course we moved it to the UI5 uh, community as well, inclusion in uh, the Easy UI 5 generator. So uh, let me quickly show you basically more or less the same thing you've seen uh, Mario show you, but of course the library part. So I already opened up the Easy UI 5 generator, which will be released later on. Um, and let me start by generating a library project. I'm going to keep the default settings here. Uh, but as you can see, it's more or less the same flow you're going through as when you're generating a project. I'm going to let that finish up as well. And then open Visual Studio Code in the new project. Uh, if that's finished here, then we can start the project. I'm a shortcut freak. <laughs> I noticed that yesterday myself, uh, the renaming of the files is something I didn't use before myself, but now I'm using F2 to change the file names. Um, let's... Okay, that's finished. So let's run our plugin uh, project. As of yesterday, I also included the live reload part. Uh, so I will quickly show you uh, that's working as well. Uh, basically, the template you had in Web IDE um, now included of, of using the, the latest uh, recommendations. So let's, for example, change the any text to test save it and we'll see everything is reloaded as expected that's it for me so and now this opened the doors for developing additional libraries on the latest best practices and this is exactly what we are aiming for with these templates what are being created in the ui5 community we want to put the best practices together from you as a community from us as uh, open ui5 ui5 developers also from sap side 
And what wouldn't be the best place than having this UI5 community here now with the support from the easy UI5 generator, which provides then these generators. The next awaited topic, I need to push a bit. Andreas, TypeScript, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. TypeScript has been a topic that has been asked for for a long time. So 2014 already, we had a GitHub issue opened about providing a TypeScript type information for UI5. And um, even people in the community have created their own uh, UI5 TypeScript approaches. Last year at UI5Con, uh, Peter has finally sort of promised that this year at UI5Con, we would have something official to release. And while we already had some type definitions available at the NPM for some time, this was like not the best thing we could do. This was first approach, but we now want to do it as, as good as possible. Uh, most of you will know what TypeScript is. Uh, it's basically JavaScript plus some type annotations, some sub JavaScript plus types. It's a superset of JavaScript basically. And it's something that browsers do not understand. So browsers do not execute TypeScript. They only speak JavaScript. So there needs to be a compilation step, a build step between the TypeScript sources you write and the JavaScript that is executed inside the browsers. So it's purely a development time or compile time thing. Uh, the home is at typescriptlang.org. It's from Microsoft, but it's open source and widely accepted. So it's, it's a cool and open thing. And um, the thing we are most interested in now is providing d.ts files. That's like type definitions for a library that is otherwise not typed, which is written in JavaScript, like UI5, like jQuery, like many others, which are written in plain JavaScript. Um, they can provide such DTS files with type definitions to explain the types of their APIs. And this is what we are striving for. The advantages of TypeScript are, I think, well known. It's uh, like good code completion because the editor knows uh, what objects you're handling. You get error messages while you write your code, much better ones than for JavaScript. Uh, also in-place documentation, there's not only code completion, where you see the proposals, what you could write next, but it also lists the documentation of what that does. So you can immediately read the documentation in the editor. And you can navigate through these types and click through and see where it comes from and so on. So that's very handy. And of course, you get better refactoring and maintenance when you have like a description of what objects you're actually handling when it's not like in JavaScript, it's something. So the new things we are providing is now a new DTS files, as I said, type definitions. And because we thought because we anyway have a compilation step from TypeScript to JavaScript, why not? aim for the most modern JavaScript for ES6 modules, ES6 classes, and so on. So the new ones we provide will be really exclusively for a new um, ES6 module syntax and ES6 classes syntax. And uh, we will not support using globals anymore, like writing just sap.m.button, which is using the global objects, which, which is discouraged for a long time already. It's useful for so going away from these practices is useful for better performance because we can bundle and optimize much better. So, so this has been a, a long time wish of us to go away from that. And the second thing, um, right now, when you're developing a UI5 project, it's usually a web app folder that contains your controller, component, and views and everything. You can run from there directly, or you can even bundle with the UI5 tooling to have an optimized package. And now this adds another layer in front or another step in front, you develop the controller and component and also the views you can put there in TypeScript in the source file and um, can use the ES6 module syntax and so on. And then there is a translation step which generates the stuff in the web app folder. Um, this is powered by Babel. And there are two plugins basically. So first is the TypeScript compilation itself. And second is the transform modules UI5 Babel plugin from Ryan Murphy we are using, which transforms the ES6 module syntax to something UI5 understands and the browsers understand to the sub UI define and to the class.extend and so on. But uh, let's look at the code. We have now um, published a first preview, let's say, of these new DTS files inside a demo 
app and demo repository. The link is here. You can go here right now, but I'll also do it. And let's look at the repository first. So that's the UI5 Cup event app, which we have also presented a while back in the UI5 is live. So I won't explain what it does. Um, make sure to go to the TypeScript branch because the main branch still has the JavaScript version, which is of course the, the leg limit. So we don't force anyone to do the TypeScript. It's just an option on top. And in the TypeScript branch where we are now, there you have in the packages, the UI form package. And that's just basically the end user application, which we have converted to TypeScript. You see, there's no more uh, web app folder, but that's the source folder. We have a look inside that later on. We have the type, so the types folder, which contains all the DTS files. No, that's the preview drop you get and which you can use for your own uh, TypeScript attempts right now. There's the question, will be there used standard bundles or use then like roll up or webpack? Mm. No, so definitely that's um, something which will not uh, happening there. That's not roll up or webpack. It's more or less a transpilation which happens from uh, this TypeScript code into UI5 code. And on the later run, UI5 code is bundled with the UI5 tooling to the preloads or to the self-contained build. Yeah, so that's now the, the second step yeah. here. And so this is also where you would optimize further, but we are now only talking about this transpilation step from TypeScript E6 to plain old JavaScript. Okay, um, coming back here and going back up, um, there are you know, some important files that are configuring basically what's going on. There's the TS config, uh, like that which configures some TypeScript compilation options and also points to our DTS. The Babel RC file is basically um, configuring the Babel transformation with the um, TypeScript compilation. And then the S6 module to plain old JavaScript UI5 transformation. They're basically just the, the two plugins configured. And then there's a package JSON, which calls in the, I open this one which calls um, Babel here for build TS or watch TS, calls Babel with a transformation. Um, so you can run it right away or, or build a package out of the TypeScript sources. Let's go right to the, to the code. Inside the source folder, the, we have the registration controller file, which is more or less the heart of the application. And there you see immediately the, the module syntax. We don't say yes, sub UIF require or sub UI define to load modules, but it's here ES6 syntax. Then some um, type definitions. I try to be somewhat slow, but not too slow <laughs> uh, for TypeScript. Again, ES6 class syntax for extending a base, the normal controller of UI5 and creating a registration controller. Immediately you see here the documentation is popping up when you hover something, no more going to the, uh, to the SDK, to the demo kit. But once we are in the init method, everything looks pretty much like standard JavaScript. And that, that's true. There is not much TypeScript involved anymore. What you occasionally see is a cast here, a typecast. For example, the get model returns the base class model, but here it's a no data model. And this is not something the API knows. This is just happening to be the case in this application. So otherwise, it's pretty standard JavaScript, you have sometimes a type annotated here in the, in the function parameters. But apart from that, it's pretty standard JavaScript, but you still have the type safety and all the documentation is there. You see all the scrolling is too fast. Code completions, when I say this dot o model, uh, o data model. Then you get all the methods that are available on the UI 5 for data model and the documentation for that. You say, for example, bind context, and then you see, okay, you need a string now. Okay, some string. Let's close here. What do we get on the context? Again, you get everything suggested what is existing on the UI 5 API. So that's that's very handy. And when you look at this at runtime, a little bit disturbing up here. So that's, that's basically the application that is implemented here. And 
you see you could um, you see the JavaScript sources here. So that's the first thing. I know the render manager, but the registration control. Now you see it's SAP UI defined. It's not ES6 module syntax anymore. It's controller extend now. But the code in here is just what you expect and more or less what you what you wrote in the TS file. And when you uh, set a breakpoint here in the controller, what I just did, then it automatically jumps over to the TypeScript file. You have the TypeScript sources here as well. This is due to uh, source maps, which are right now generated in line at the very end, but could of course be in separate files to not add any overhead. Um, and you can now debug in the TypeScript code you wrote in the editor. So when I reload the page, it takes a second, something is not so well here. Then you hit the breakpoint that really in your TypeScript code and you can really debug your TypeScript code so you don't have to translate in your head, okay, the JavaScript where it is coming from or so, but you can directly um, debug the TypeScript code. And of course you see in, in JavaScript, you don't have any of the uh, TypeScript overhead. It's compiled, it's just JavaScript like you would have written it yourself. There's no performance hit or so by using TypeScript at design at time or development time. Yeah, Andreas, we should get rid of O binding. You can said we can get rid of O and that, that's S true. So the Hungarian <laughs> notation to indicate the type is not no longer useful in TypeScript. So we see the the application code is mostly very normal, apart from the imports and so on, and not a lot of TypeScript syntax there, not a lot of overhead also, but you still get all the benefits, and you can debug the TypeScript code. Obviously, I think I finished in time. If I get it done in, Ooh, in you this did minute, it well, yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's the only preview drop right now. We will release it later this year. We hope for your F5Con to have something that we can really officially support. And you can, of course, right now and should right now try this example or even integrate it with your own application. You can just drop in your code more or less in here and try to convert it to TypeScript or integrate our DTS files to your existing TypeScript application if you have one. Of course, we need feedback because we have worked a lot. We have converted some applications to TypeScript um, and we have encountered some issues because our type definitions are generated from the JS doc of UL5. And there can still be some errors because that's not automatically checked. We try to eliminate most of them, but some might be left. And yeah, and also for the final release, we will not only support open UL5 DTS, then you will get the full enchilada of uh, SAP UL5 DTS. Uh, types of definitions that you can yeah. really completely build also SAP UI5 applications then with TypeScript. Yeah. And that's it. So I guess we have to stop now. And uh, first of all, before we stop, I want to say thanks you, uh, thank you, Marius. Thanks, Hart Jan, uh, uh, Jan, sorry, uh, for being with us. That was really, really great. And I really enjoyed um, your two presentations. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. And yeah, always happy to come back if there's another opportunity. Thank you. And with so, the UI5 community project, we have now started something where we can really make more of these community projects. We can really use this stage here for the UI5 as live to bring that up and to present that here in front of our round because we are UI5 yes. guys. We can yes. shape our future with that, so, what we are doing. Here. If you want to do a new project or have a new project, just tell us. So thanks again uh, for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed it as I did and hope seeing you in Maiden. Thank you so much. See you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.